Hey everyone, welcome to the E2 Effective Elders podcast. Visit us at e2elders.org and please share this good word with others. Hey friends, we're so grateful that you are listening to or watching this podcast that has been made possible by CDF Capital, our long-term ministry partners. Uh, We are who we are today much because of the generous investment of CDF Capital in E2 Effective Elders. You know, all of 2022, we are looking at a good word. Every month is a different word to bring encouragement and challenge into our lives, particularly as leaders in the local church. For example, last month, the month of July, was the word rest. And what a timely word it was because in the midst of summer, we want to get some rest, take a little bit of vacation, particularly while the kids and the grandkids are off from school. Now this month, the month of August, our good word is urgency urgency and again it's going to be a timely word think with me for a moment simple definitions uh, of urgency it would be of pressing importance if something is urgent it has pressing importance or uh, if something is urgent it needs here it is it needs immediate attention Pressing importance, immediate attention. Why is this a timely word? Well, let's go back to the kids and the grandkids. School is starting and it is of pressing importance. Uh, We need to give immediate attention to get some school clothes, some school supplies, get them registered. You see, it's a timely word for this month of the year, urgency. Now, a picture speaks a thousand words. And this is a picture that speaks a thousand words here in our children's ministry at Indian Creek Christian Church, the creek on the southeast side of Indianapolis, where I happen to serve as an elder. And this uh, display speaks powerfully into the lives of parents, all about urgency. For example, this jar, uh, it represents uh, uh, marbles Uh, every week uh, in a child's life who happens to be a newborn. There are 936 weeks until that newborn graduates from high school. A three-year-old, there are 780 weeks until that three-year-old graduates from high school. And we go all the way down as that child ages. For example, a 12-year-old, there are 312 weeks until this 12-year-old graduates from high school, a 16-year-old only 104 weeks until they graduate, an 18-year-old no marbles are left. So what we see here is growing urgency of that parent-child relationship. But it's not just for kids, it's for us. For example, in Psalm 90 verse 12, This Bible was given to me 40 years ago when I was ordained. I've had it rebound multiple times. And in Psalm 90, this is the oldest psalm of all 150. And this psalm was written by a guy named Moses. And in verse 12, this is what he says. It's a prayer to God. And he he prays, teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This prayer is very important in my life and in yours. Every day that we live is one less day to live. And I need to number my days aright. Why? Because I have fewer days ahead of me than I do behind me. So I need to live with greater urgency every day that God allows me to live. I need to live with urgency uh, and make sure that I'm living for his glory. In Isaiah chapter 43, it says in verse 7, there's this very interesting phrase embedded in the verse. And God says, whom I made for my glory. God gave me life. He made me for his glory and you as well. He put in you and in me the breath of life. And today on this day, he's allowed me to live. 
He has given me another day by which to live and to bring him glory. And I need to live with urgency for that purpose, bringing him glory. A book that I read, oh, probably 20 plus years ago, was written by John Piper. And this book is pretty powerful. It's called Don't Waste Your Life. And in the book, in particular, there's a story of two ladies. And uh, uh, it goes this way. In April of 2000, Ruby Eliason and Laura Edwards were killed in Cameroon, West Africa. Ruby was over 80. Single all her life, she poured it into one great thing, to make Jesus Christ known among the unreached, the poor, the sick. Laura, a widow, a medical doctor, pushing 80 years old and serving at Ruby's side in Cameroon. The brakes failed, the car went over the cliff, and they were both killed instantly. John Piper then writes, I asked my congregation, was that a tragedy? Two lives driven by one great passion, namely to be spent in unheralded service to the perishing poor for the glory of Jesus. Even two decades after most of their American counterparts had retired to throw their lives uh, away on trifles. No, their deaths were not a tragedy. It was glorious. Their lives were not wasted. These lives were not lost. Jesus said in Mark 8, 35, whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. I'll tell you what a tragedy is. I will show you how to waste your life. Consider a story from the February 1998 edition of Reader's Digest. It tells of a couple who took early retirement from their jobs in the Northeast five years ago. He was 59, she was 51. They now live in Florida where they cruise on their 30-foot boat, they play softball, and they collect shells. At first, I thought it might be a joke, a spoof on the American dream, but it wasn't. Tragically, this was their dream. Come to the end of your life, your one and only precious God-given life, and let the last great work of your life be before you give an account to your creator, simply to be this playing softball, collecting shells. Picture them before Jesus on the great day of judgment. Look, Lord, see my seashells. That is a tragedy. You and I have urgency. How are we going to live for the glory of God this day in which he's given to us the breath of life? You know, at E2, we have four rank ordered core values and the fourth core value that we have says spirit led urgency. We know that the days are numbered. We know that 12 churches a day now are closing in America. We know now that fewer and fewer young people are going to Bible college, to seminary, to become the next generation of leaders in churches. So what are we doing with great spirit-led urgency? We're, we're now writing a book called The Preaching Elder, refilling the, leadership, uh, the preaching pipeline. And we're going to do all that we can in order to, to keep churches open, that they will not become one of those 12 each day to close because we're going to equip an elder to preach the word of God, keeping that church viable and vibrant for the glory of Jesus. That urgently has been put onto our heart, mind, and soul on our E2 team. Let me just ask as we end this very brief podcast, let me ask you, what is of pressing importance in your life right now? What is needing immediate attention in your life right now? Your marriage, your family, children, grandchildren, aging parents? Do they need pressing attention, immediate uh, attention, pressing importance? What about your health? Uh, if you're an elder, if you're a pastor of a church, if you are a lead servant, a diakonos, a deacon, a lead servant, is what you do for Jesus needing immediate attention? Is it of pressing importance? What is urgent to you now? It is our prayer that you will share this good word all month long with people who you know, you value, and you love. 
and that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you this month, the month of August, 2022, what is urgent to him in your life. Lead well.